What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the You Know What. It's your girl, Laura Pintaro here, and today I want to talk to you guys in depth about the difference between color correction and color grading. Now, if you're anything like me and how I was at the beginning of my career, you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, I didn't even know these terms existed, and now, Laura, you're telling me that there's a vital, vital difference that I need to know between the two terms? I am f***. Yes. I mean, no, you're not f***, but yes, you need to know the difference. And don't worry, this video was made for you. I got your back. Let's go. And before we get started, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and ring that little bell. It really helps me out to know what content you guys like that I'm making so that I can keep making more. And thank you so much for all the support that I've gotten so far from you guys. I've gotten support from people in places that I've never expected. And even though this is a relatively small community so far, I'm pretty overwhelmed by the response I've been getting. So thank you guys so much. I will continue to do what I'm doing. Hope you like it. So the reason I decided to make this video is because in my last two vlogs, I actually address color grading and color correction in two different tutorials. The color grading tutorial is in Lightroom and the color correction tutorial is in Premiere Pro. You can check out the videos on my page or on the links down below. But I just wanted to make a video addressing this question and spelling it out for you in a clear and concise way without adding a tutorial on top of it so that you can refer to this video for my past tutorials and any future tutorials that will be coming out. And there will be a lot of them. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get into it. What is the difference between color correction and color grading? Well, let's start by first defining color correction because it's actually a stepping stone to the process and workflow of color grading. Most editors call it a first pass or a primary color correction because it's the very baseline of the workflow of color correction. Color correcting is defined as, well, it's in the name, correcting the colors of the footage to make it look realistic fixing any white balance issues, any temperature control issues, or any contrast issues of any kind to make the footage look as if it was shot that day. So to quickly illustrate to you the difference between raw and color corrected footage, here is what my footage looks like coming out of my camera, completely raw and unedited. You can see that the footage comes out looking very gray, very muted, no contrast at all. But when we color correct it, we put back in that color, the contrast, and all that good stuff. So this is a great starting point. Think of color correction as revealing or uncovering the true colors of a piece of footage to make it look as it should have looked when it was shot that day. This is a great step for color grading. And when you are color correcting, be sure you're using the workflow of going through each and every individual clip. Every individual clip needs its own treatment and its own color correction to make sure that everything is normalized and has kind of a flat standard of color correctedness. So then color grading is an artistic technique used to implement a style or aesthetic between the entire movie, film, piece, whatever it is, to better tell the story. So the reason we color correct before we color grade is because color grading is using unnatural, artistic, and unrealistic colors. So we need to have a natural and realistic starting point so we know just how crazy we're getting. You know what I mean? The way it was described to me is imagine trying to paint a wall in a bedroom. And on that wall is tons and tons of imperfections, crayon markings, other blotches of paint, holes, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of artifacts, right? And imagine if you just tried to paint over all those artifacts and imperfections, what would happen? It would not look very good. If anything, it would draw more attention to all those artifacts and imperfections because you would see it bleeding through the paint. If you don't fix your imperfections before getting crazy with the colors, it's gonna look horrible. I hope that analogy kind of makes sense. Color correction would be the initial fixing of all the issues, prepping and priming the wall before painting, and color grading would be painting the wall and getting crazy with the colors. I've heard from some photographers and videographers that sometimes you can get away with not color correcting and skipping the color correction phase and just going straight for color grading. I respectfully disagree. I think that we need to color correct every single time to get the best possible results that we can. Why would we skip a step just to save time when the step is vitally, vitally important to the process? You might think your eyes are well trained and you know what realistic colors look like and you can tell when colors are looking good and when they're not. You can't. Your eyes are not that well trained. I'm telling you right now. 
when I'm sitting at my desk color correcting for hours and hours, I literally have to close my eyes like this and reset them because I don't trust my eyes. I don't trust just my eyes. That's why I'm using my scopes, my waveform, my histogram, which you can see in my last tutorials. It's kind of like flying a plane through a cloud. I've never personally done it, but I've heard that when you're flying through a cloud, you can actually lose all sense of where you are. And if you're hurtling forward, backwards, if your nose diving down, upward, you can totally lose all sense because you're in a cloud. You have no sense of direction or no starting point, right? So you need to trust your scopes as a pilot to safely get you out of that cloud. You can't just be blindly slapping on color grading to all your raw footage. You need to navigate out of the clouds, know that you have the realistic colors locked and loaded and ready to go before you get crazy with it. The best thing about color grading is that it's an artistic expression, so no one can tell you you're wrong. There's no rules here. You can do whatever you want. If you want to have super black and white grainy footage, go for it. Achieve that look. Do you, homie. If you want to have horror looking super green and black looking footage, you good. If you want super blown out, saturated looking footage, go for it. I support you. The possibilities are literally endless with color grading, so go for it. But make sure you have a good starting point. It's the most important thing. And just a quick side note here, if you want to see how I did all those color gradings that I just showed you, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button because there will be many, many tutorials coming in the future, including that one. Well, I hope I helped in aiding in your understanding of color correction versus color grading. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments down below, or you can always email me at laurapintaro at gmail.com. I answer all of my emails personally. I love hearing from you guys. And please be sure to check out my last two vlogs. You can find them on my page or in the links down below about color grading and color correction. Otherwise, you got rock. See you next time. Thank you.